Hi guys, welcome again to this little teaching that I do every single time. These teachings come from you. Now, a lot of you have this issue and that's why I decided to talk about it. And it is FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. A lot of businesses are having issues having their items seized by the FDA when they are shipping products to the USA, to Canada. You know, US and Canada, they follow mostly the same principle. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Now, all other countries have similar agencies like the FDA. So again, depending on where you are shipping to, you need to know their rules and regulations. It's very important. Now, take the European Union, for example. There are a lot of regulations on anything more than 20 kg. So if you are shipping anything more than 20 kg to most of the European Union, most of the time, it needs to follow greater scrutiny. And that scrutiny means going by the rules of their Food and Drug Administration Agency. The European Union is made up of so many countries, and each one have various types. A place like Ukraine, Ukraine will only allow you to bring in 10 kilograms of food without having to follow some of the key processes. For this discussion, we're going to be talking about the US FDA and their processes. A lot of you know what I do. Very simple. I help African businesses to find buyers in the USA and beyond so they can earn in dollars. So again, like I said, if you have any questions, send me a DM. Everything I talk about are questions from you business. So, the Food and Drug Administration is basically responsible for monitoring all the food and drugs that is sold in a place like the US. And it also means that anything coming in, they also monitor it. So, take note of that. In a place like Nigeria, is the equivalent of NAVDAQ. That is what they do. Now, what is food facility registration? So, the first step you need to do when you are exporting food is that you must do what they call food facility registration registration. This is a must. Don't export commercial quantities of food to the USA without having a food facility registration. So many people do this and it is wrong and that's why they keep on seizing your shipment. We in Africa, you know, we are losing a lot due to this proper handling of items, right? What is the essence of the FDA food facility registration? It's very, very simple. After the 9-11, the government set up an act because they discovered that terrorists were also trying to infiltrate the USA through the food supply. They were trying to poison the food supply and then ship these poison food products into the USA. So they set up a system that means that anybody who is exporting commercial quantities of food to the USA will have to be registered so that if the food comes in and there is a problem, right? What are they going to do? They have the registration number. They know where the food is coming from and they are going to be able to go to that source and basically stop it. So that is the reason why you have the FDA food facility registration. Now, for those of you who want the full version of this video, because a lot of times my videos go longer than five minutes, check it out on the YouTube page. The link is down below. Now, it's very important we understand this. Make sure you have your food facility registered. Registered. What are the type of foods that you have to do to register to have a food facility? Any food that is consumed by humans plus animals. So don't think because, oh, I'm making pet food or cat food that you don't need to have a food facility registration. No. Once it is something that is consumed by humans and animals, you must have an FDA food facility registration. Either it's a food supplement, beverage, alcoholic drink, fruit and vegetables, infant formula, baked food, food animals, sweet and candy. Even if you are exporting food, to be used to feed livestock over there. We have some customers who do that already. You need to have an FDA food facility registration. Now, another thing you need with every FDA food facility registration is when you register, there is somebody called a US agent. The reason why they set up this food facility registration is because I think the last time I checked, there are over 45 million shipments of food coming into the USA and similar large volumes going into Canada. If 45 million food shipments are coming in, the US FDA can never have enough people to be monitoring every single thing. When you set up your food facility registration account, you have to have what they call a US agent. So what does a US agent do? When your shipment is held for any reason, the US FDA employees will contact the US agent. It is now going to be the US agent who will contact you. You need to make sure you 
are using a facility address, a phone number, an email that is valid so that the agents can reach you when needed. Now, a lot of people make this mistake. I see people telling me, oh, I registered my FDA food facility registration for free. It cost me this. The next question I always ask them, do you have a U.S. agent who is available 24-7 to pick up the calls on your behalf. And a lot of them go like, uh, no. The requirement is simple. Your agent must be available 24 seven. For them to be available 24 seven, it means they have to charge you for that service. And that's why you need to be careful who you are using. You need to be careful who you are talking to. I've seen a lot of people who put themselves out as helping people to register a food facility registration. All they do is they do the registration. After then, you are left on your own. If there's any form of seizure, if there's any form of issues, if there's any form of complaints, even inspection. A lot of times when you begin to ship a certain volume of quantity into the USA, what happens? The FDA will note your shipments and then they will contact the local FDA agents and say, you know what? This person is bringing a huge amount of food. Let's go and inspect this facility and make sure that it is up to standard. It is the duty of your US agent to let you know that the FDA inspectors are coming. What happens if you don't have a US agent that is effective? What happens when they send that email, they call that US agent and nobody is there to pick up? Your facility could be shut down. You could be removed from the listing. Take this very serious. So again, you need to have a US agent and make sure you are using an agent that is available uh, 24 7 to receive anything. Understand one thing when you are trying to register for that facility, they are not going to come for an inspection. You just register. They typically will come for an inspection after a while when they see that you are bringing in items. Like I said, there's over 45 million shipments of food items into the US every year. So there's no way they're going to be able to inspect all that. And that's why they do it on a case by case basis. By the time they see that you are bringing in so many things, they will now go and inspect that facility. There are certain things they are looking for. HACCP, hazard analysis and critical control points, making sure you are following GMP, good manufacturing practices, your labels are in compliance. These are some of the things they are looking for they are checking to see that your registration is accurate so they are verifying what you have registered with fda they verify your operating license certificate of incorporation your phone number your address they check all those things to make sure that your registration is accurate so again that is what you're going to see with an fda so what are the needs to register so one you need to have your facility address before the fda will allow you to just put your facility address and they believed it but they noticed something that a lot of people who are registering were using facility addresses that was not actually theirs so imagine a situation whereby somebody registered an FDA food facility. When the inspectors come in, what do they see? They see a barbing saloon. They see a school. They see a hairdressing shop. And that became a problem. So what did they do? They now had to partner with D&B, Don and Bradstreet. Don and Bradstreet is an organization that verifies your facility, your registration, your CAC, and they are virtually in most countries. So they are going to verify, make sure that your registration, your facility, everything is correct. When they do that, they will now issue you a Dun and Bradstreet number, and you will need that number to complete your registration. Now, that number is going to be in the Dun and Bradstreet database. So, when you register with FDA, they are going to cross check it to make sure that you have a valid registration that has been verified by DMB. If you don't have the DMB, they will allow you to register, but you must have that DMB within 90 days. If after 90 days you don't have your DMB verified, they are going to cancel your registration. So again, the first thing is your facility address. The next thing is facility owners. That is you and the contact details. So when we talk about the facility owners, who are the facility owners, right? They are talking about if it's a parent company, an LLC, limited company, who is the owner of that facility? Imagine if you are a company your headquarters is in Lagos and you have branches where you make various things. You have one in Kano because you want it closer to the source of the food products and you have another one in maybe Port Harcourt. You cannot use the facility of the headquarters to register those. 
you must have a separate food facility registration for Kano, and you must have a separate food facility registration for Port Harcourt. So don't get it wrong. Make sure you understand this. Now, obviously, you need the contact details. They need to know who to contact if there is any issue. So that's where you have that. And then you need to state the type of food that you are processing in that facility. Let's understand something. You mustn't only be a manufacturer to register a food facility. You could be a place that is storing food. You could be a distributor. All they are really interested in is that when they have this food in the USA and that food has some form of contamination in any way, they can trace along the line either to the warehouse where it was stored because again, a lot of contamination can happen in the warehouse. They are going to be able to trace to the warehouse where it was stored and then from there, they will definitely be able to trace to where the food is coming from. Trace the source of that issue. So you could be the manufacturer, you could be a storer, you could be a distributor. As long as there is that point along the value chain where something can happen to the food and for which they can trace the food. This is very, very important. The type of operation, and that's what I just mentioned. So on that type of operation, you could be the manufacturer, you could be just storing, you could be doing those type of things. And then obviously you need to state your hours of operation so that when the inspectors come in, they know when to come in. They will typically come during your operation time. And like I said before, your US agent contact. They need to know the contact details of your US agent. And then you'll sign an agreement online that says, oh, we agree to be bound by the terms and conditions of the FDA food facility registration program before you can submit. Registering is very easy. Like I said, before you register, they do not need to come in and check your facility. You can just register. They will give you the registration. You will be approved. But like I said, as you begin to ship, somebody will come in, usually unannounced. Most times they give you like 48 hours notice that they are coming to inspect your facility. So again, registering is very expensive. A lot of times you have companies who will do an FDA food facility registration for as much as $600. Why? Because they need to keep somebody 24 seven waiting for that call from the FDA, right? But here at the African Import Export Solutions, we help you register and the details of the registration is also in the link below. Click it, check it, give us a call and that's it. Don't get this wrong. Whenever you are shipping items to the USA, make sure that your shipping company knows about your FDA food facility registration, again, commercial quantities, and make sure it is included in the shipping document. And this is how you get to know those companies that understand the shipping process to the USA. Number two is make sure that they file a pre-alert. A pre-alert is a communication to the FDA 48 hours before your shipment leaves. If they don't do it, you're gonna have a problem. Why is this so important? I had a lady who called me out of the blue, said she saw one of my videos, her food product, 350 kilograms of food products had been seized by the FDA. So I told her, send me the documents. As soon as she sent it to me, I saw on the airway bill, there was no food facility registration number. And then I asked her, okay, so what did the FDA official say? He said, well, the FDA official said I should go and register a food facility number and she will release it. And I told her, okay, give me the list of the items in the shipment. And there were over 20 different items. So this woman had traveled to the USA, set up a little business where she was going to start selling African food, sent money to the brother back home, and that was it. Everything she spent money on, thousands of dollars, went to the drain because they were going to seize that shipment. She had three choices. One was to ship them back. She paid close to $4,000 to ship it in. She will pay another $4,000 to ship it back. She bought those items for close to $5,000, meaning she would lose $13,000. The second option was what? For the FDA to destroy it. If they were to destroy it, $5,000 buying, $4,000 shipping, $9,000 lost. Now the third option was what? For her to go and register. Now for you to go through this process of Don and Bradstreet checking you and all those things, it's gonna take time. Now the worst part of it 
was that she had over 10 different items made by different manufacturers. It means that she may need to register from each of those manufacturers. But there's a way she could have gotten out of it. She could have just registered all of those under one facility and say she is a warehouse for those facilities. That will fly under the FDA registration. But again, it was going to take at least a couple of days to get everything. But I never heard from her again. So I really don't know what she did. But like I said, if she went and followed my advice and got to register she could have done it under a storage that she has a facility that stores it probably within two three days all that should be done and they may have allowed the food to enter the reason i'm saying this is don't ship commercial quantities of food to the usa if you don't have a food facility registration number it's very 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 important follow these rules and you have no problem i help african businesses to find buyers in the USA so they can earn in dollars by selling the local products they make here in Africa. Send me a DM. All these things I talk about are based on DMs and questions that all of you are asking me. Share this video, like, comment, tell me what more you want me to talk about. My goal is simple, to help increase the wealth of Africa by going into export to earn in dollars. Thank you for watching. I'll see you another time.